It's Sean Lamb here for Streaming Media Producer at NAB 2024. I'm at the Black Magic booth with Bob, and today we're going to be talking about SMPTE 2110. So sure. there's a whole rack here of products, <laughs> but before we go into the minutia of detail, which we yeah. probably actually won't go too deep in it, let's have a bit of an overview. What is the standard, the SMPTE 2110 standard? Sure. So it's a way to move video across the IP networks, right? And last year we introduced a couple of products that help people take video and turn it into a SMPTE 2110 signal mm -hmm. so that you can send it through Ethernet and then bring it back to baseband to a monitor or to a display or, or into an edit system. So we started with those products last year, but one of the things that we wanted to do, and those were HD products, this year we wanted to be able to move 4K signals the same way, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people have 10 gig uh, Ethernet uh, backbones and so what we did was we created our own IP codec so that we're able to move 4K down 10 gig, right? So this year we have some new products that have the 10 gig ethernet built in to move the data across, right? So like the camera, you can uh, come out of the camera's 10 gig, mm -hmm. you can go to our new uh, monitor, our new audio monitor, uh, you know, we have um, a new um, uh, IP converter here. Yep. So it's converting those signals back into baseband so you can bring them into a switcher or whatnot, right? And we also had it create our own ethernet switch, but the switch is really designed for video. It's not really your traditional ethernet switch. It's a switch designed for video so that you have that front display similar to like a, a video router because we realize that not everybody's IT centric, but they want to be able to move images long distances. And this is a great way to do it. And the compression that we're using this, this 2110 IP codec that we've created is going to be open source so anybody can add it to their products. And so what that means too, right? Because there's different flavors of the standard that it's not one that's already supported by someone else. Other companies have to join in on your open source, um, I guess, codec there. So if there's other hardware out there or, or software, it's not going to work with the Blackmagic ecosystem at this point. At this point, which is why we created a bevy of products that you get started now, but let the others come to us, but it's going to be a free codec, so they don't have yeah. to license it. Starting off with the cameras, which cameras support the 2110 flavor that you guys have? Sure, so the new uh, Pixis camera and the new um, Cine camera 12K have 10 gig Ethernet ports on them already. Um, and, you know, we also have the other devices to turn it in from one to the other, right? So we have, uh, we have a couple of new boxes that came out at the show that you could take, you could plug the SDI in and then turn it into the SMPTE 2110 to move it across to another, uh, you know, receiver, for lack of a better term, so they can monitor it uh, somewhere else. Okay. So we have a lot of uh, components there so you can get going, right? So it's not like you're stuck. You can use it. And, and again, those... SDI signals uh, could be anything. They don't have to be our camera. So talk to me a bit about the compression that's on that sig signal, because it's not an uncompressed signal. It's not uncompressed, but we're using about eight pixels. I mean, it's a pretty, very, very light compression, especially if you're going less than, uh, I think, like if you're doing 30 frames or less and there's zero compression, then we use a little bit when we have to do 60 frames per second, but it's it's negligible. And it, and that's part of the SMPTE standard is that it's not supposed to be heavily compressed, but you know, and we're, so we conform to the standard, but we created this codec to make it a little bit more nimble to move these 4K images down 10 gig without having to expand to 25 okay. or 100. What, what are the, some of the use cases? Who, who's likely to adopt the SMPTE 2110 products that you guys have? I think, well, a lot of broadcasters could use it if they're doing remote work. Um, you know, I think that uh, we're going to see, I, I always say that when we come to this show, we find people that are going to use it for something we didn't even think of, right? But, you know, even in houses of worship, they need, they want to move the signal across campus to somewhere else. They could use that and know that they're not going to get a degraded signal on the other end, right? So I think that we'll see, and we're hearing a lot of good conversations now about different use cases that people have, but really it's just anytime you need to move a signal from one place to another that you can't run a cable to, yeah. And you can do it through the Ethernet. Well, we have the ability to do that now. Is there much latency to, to talk about in the, in this no, workflow? No, no. It's a very, very uh, latency-free. Uh, and that's the other thing. It needs to do that. You can't yeah. have lots of delay because otherwise, you know, things get a sync and whatever. No, 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 no. It's, a, you know, like I said, eight pixels is nothing. Yeah. So, uh, you're, and if, and you you have the ability to actually lock the router and some of our other products so that you can lock them 
to the IP uh, clock so that everything stays in sync and then you don't have any drift. And so the 10G standard, I mean, that's supported by just standard Cat6 Ethernet yeah, cable. Exactly. Um, which is fairly inexpensive and ubiquitous, right? It's, well, it's out there everywhere. Right. And a lot of people have a lot of 10 gig uh, infrastructure already. And mm -hmm. so this doesn't require them to though move to a new uh, level like 100 or something like that. Yeah. Now, the actual router actually has two 100 gig ports in there. So if you do need to go into a bigger uh, network, that you, you can do that. But... You know, it's also 16 ports of, uh, of 10 gig, which is, you know, just should... plenty. So what we did here with the Ethernet switch was to basically make it look like our router panel so that it works the same way where you go to the in and you pick a source and you can dial through and find out what, what you have. And then you can send it to a destination or you can pick the output where you want to go. So say I want to send, uh, you know, this deck to this monitor location and then I can I can take that, I can also change the, the input that's gonna to go to this destination and then I hit take and it moves to that. Um, and again, that is a very video centric sort of workflow and it doesn't involve IP addresses or, or anything and, and some software program that you need to use to, to actually move the signals around. This is a very familiar way. It works the same way as our source and destination here as opposed to the in and out that we're using for delineation. And then you take it just like you would take it here on our on our router. Um, and the big difference is SDI on the back, HDSDI, and Ethernet on the back. Correct, right. And so obviously the HDSDI is only gonna go uh, up towards of 300 feet away, uh, but this could be wherever, right? Depending on, on where you're sending the signals and what you have connected. Now, this uh, IP converter here is gonna take in four camera feeds, say, and turn them back into basement from wherever they are. But it also provides power over over uh, POI, so you're able to actually power that device. So like our studio cameras are gonna get an update so that they can uh, accept this, uh, this uh, compression, you know, the 2110 IP compression, so that you can use this as a way to feed four of those studio cameras and you're going to get those signals back including the round tripping of the program output to get all the full camera control and whatnot that you that you're used to so we have uh you know it, it's just the next evolution of of uh of working and, and being able to do four in one in one one rack unit is is pretty great and and then again you can go through it and look at the different um signals at whichever ones that we have hooked up at the moment uh there we go so you can uh see what's coming in on those signals and then uh and then what what's on the actual outputs too depending on where they're going right so uh it is it's just a way to make it more video centric for people not having to really think about the whole ip structure we're, we're kind of doing the heavy lifting for them and making it just user friendly because you know it's only good if you can actually make it work, right? Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you. This has been a look at the Blackmagic Design Simti 2110 products at NAB 2024.